Hello once again clients, designers, and visitors alike. Here we are again with another How It's Made in the Graphic Design Industry at GoNink.com. Today we're going to talk about reflections and their uses. The majority of images you'll see that use reflections will be on the web and your mobile devices and it's best to leave it for that form of media in my opinion. Reproducing the effect in print just does not produce the same clear results that you might see on your monitor or on your mobile device. So let's go ahead and start off in uh, using Adobe Photoshop here and this is the image that we're going to recreate of this H3 Hummer and you can see our, we already have the reflection down here on the bottom. So what we do is we start off with this base image and you can see I've already scaled it down to a certain size and left the black background and the reason being is that's what you're oftentimes going to see on the web or on your mobile devices. So what we need is a duplicate of this image and we drag this down to our new layer icon and we now have two images over here on the right. As you can see it says Hummer copy and Hummer. It's personal preference but I like to have the copy below the original. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert that by going to edit, transform, and flip vertical. Now you can't see that it's flip vertical because it's underneath this original image here if I deselect that eye icon you can see it's now upside down. So let's go ahead and take the Hummer copy layer and we're going to hit our shift key and then just drag straight down and that looks pretty good right there and there is our reflection. However this is not a real world uh, example of a reflection just because of the fact that if this image was sitting on a mirror it would be but in the normal world like if it was sitting on glass or maybe near a body of water it wouldn't look so clear and crisp. So what we're going to do is we're going to tone it down a little bit, take the opacity out, and do what's called a feather. So I go up here in my toolbox and I go to the selection tool. And we make a little selection there. And actually I think it's a little big, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. So now I go to my select. And look at there, there's a feather. And what this is going to do is it's going to clear out some of the image for us so it fades out. And it brings up this dialog box and 10 pixels I think will work pretty good for what we're trying to accomplish here. I hit OK and as you can see our little selection box here now has rounded corners. And if we hit our delete button and deselect, you can now see that it looks a little bit more feathered and faded out. But even still, like I mentioned with glass or water, this bottom image, this lower image, is still going to be a, not nearly as crisp. So if we go over to our Layers palette, and we click, click down the opacity to about, eh, it's about 50%. I think that would work pretty good. We'll crank it down just a tad bit more. And there you go. There's reflection. So it's quite simple feat actually to create this on a general basis. Um, creating it for their specific web applications is a little bit more difficult. But uh, again, that's what we're all about here at GoNinks, just te teaching the simple things. So thanks for stopping by and come back soon for another installment of GoNink, How It's Made.